Okay guys, it's been a while and as always you're watching Aprilia AI and today we're going to be talking about this new amazing AI tool called Tooncrafter which has been built by a multitude of different people including institutions like the Chinese University and the City University of Hong Kong including Tencent AI Labs and what they have basically done is this new AI where you can basically put two inputs of an Im image and you basically give it out the first frame and the last frame and what it will do it will basically animate everything between the first and the second image that you have basically given it and this kind of has been made in mind of animators in the world because if you look at any cartoon or anime that has been made today most of them are very tedious because the animators have to go frame by frame and yes the technology of these you know animation programs have gone gotten better over the years I mean back in the day where they would just kind of like almost hand drawn everything which is crazy but there's still a lot of like hard work that goes into actual animation and what this tool is essentially doing is basically cutting off a lot of the hard work that is basically needed to you know animate in between the frames so this is going to be saving a lot of time for the animators which are basically going to be start using this actual tool now everything that you're going to be seeing here today is still kind of like a proof of a concept this is not a perfect professional product yet and i'm sure it's going to be get a lot better as more time goes on like last year has been basically the year for a lot of these image generators and how better they got over a course of through 23 and this year we're going to be seeing how much of these video AI image generators are going to get more and more better as more time goes on. Obviously I do think that the image stuff is probably going to be taking a lot more time than the image stuff in general but this is a tool that basically can be downloaded by everyone on their github profile but they also have a demo which we're going to be looking into a second and I'm going to be showing you some of my results and a lot of the images that they have basically used here are from Ghibli movies and some other like high-end anime in general and it seems to be a lot of the reference images are basically using multitude of like anime and cartoon style images there are some like different types of styles like zoom outs things growing things moving on the canvas eye movement blinking it's pretty impressive when you actually start paying attention some of the quality that this has been doing but every time when we are looking at these project pages of these ai tools they are always showing out kind of like the best stuff and there's a lot of things that the ai still don't understand in terms of like movements of certain objects and like physics so and, and here are a bit of the comparisons between some other tools which are doing animation i have never heard about these other ones i haven't really paid attention to them so i can't really say but in case you're going to be comparing these two the tune crafter is definitely superior between a lot of these products the tune crafter has a bit of a better idea of the hand movement for example uh, compared to the other ones and here we have like a car movement here and how it's like deformed in every other version of the tool but I mean and even they are a bit more transparent about like how everything basically is working out because there are also examples of images which are looking a bit worse and also yes it can do sketch animation and it can do even adding color to images and you basically can give it a reference of a gif I believe so and it basically will color it out so that's actually kind of cool and a lot of ways I think these types of tools are going to be the way the future animation is going to be done but people like expecting that will the anime industry change overnight pretty much no because Japan is kind of slow on the uptake in terms of like adapting new forms of technology like when you look at like 3d animation in Japan like outside from Toei for example it's still very rough on the edges and they really haven't mastered the treaty style but i think i think at some point you know that the western world is probably going to be jumping into this animation ai stuff before japan will and eventually there's going to be studios which are not going to be using and here are some like versions of where it's kind of like deformed and not doing as should it have been so there are examples where you know everything is not going exactly how it should be and here like a good example of like the black thing is moving even though it's like the part of the interior of the 
spaceship or whatever suit this, this guy is using on this picture. And here we got a deformation of these things. So, and yes, in case you want to use it, there's the Hawking Face demo. And basically, I tried out a couple of different images. I haven't tried any like real life pictures. I believe everything has been trained on cartoons and anime. I mean, it's basically called Toon for a reason. And here is like just used mid journey to basically prop out an image and then did a variation out of it. These are not like super keen. These are not the same images, obviously, as you can see, that the characters are different and in different poses. And obviously, the end result is going to be quite a wild and it will turn from about two seconds. There's, to my understanding, at least on the demo version, not a way to basically change that timing and more and more frames to it. But two seconds is still like 10, 25 frames. In most animes, 20, 20 frames to 25 frames. So that's a lot of work basically being cut out. And these take around 60 seconds, 60 seconds to basically pump out. But I first show you normal version here, and there you can see like let's put it on play, and then I'm gonna zoom it out. It looks kind of weird, but it kind of looks like you know it's, it's it's doing something here, like something is clearly like phasing into like there's a definitely a blending happening there. But because the images are so different from each other, the the blending is always looking kind of ridiculous. But I do like the end result here in a way that it's like it's transforming into another image. So that's, that's kind of cool. And here is another image of, just watch this um, anime yesterday. This is not a very good end result. So we have an image here and it's like throwing a knife and it looks pretty uh, malformed and it's like jumping all over the place. It's like very deformed and then just like quickly jumps into, and obviously you can always do like a couple of different more prompts with these and try to see a bit different end result but you know as i said in the earlier on the video like a lot of the images that you're going to be pumping out probably will look something like this but obviously you can run this on your own computer and have like multitude of different you know copies of the prompt so eventually one will look a lot more smarter than the other and this uh, demo might be in case you don't want to go through the installation thing. I recommend using less sampling steps. So usually around 40 to 45, you do 50, I'm getting a lot of errors. So play in mind that that's kind of normal here. But in case it will first like tell you that it might be acquiring GPU, but that doesn't mean actually that the GPU has started silicon fail and give you an error. But yeah, and, and you can also add prompting here. The normal base FPS here is set at 10, given out the fact that this is only two second clip, 10 frames makes a lot more sense. But in case you want a more realism, I guess you could go for 20. But these are kind of like the default things I would basically go for and trying it out. And in case you have been running around with stable diffusion already, it's probably going to be requiring a lot of that same thing. So Git, Python, and I think there was another third tool, which, oh yeah, some NVIDIA CUDA version is also required in order to basically get this thing running. So if you have already installed Stable Diffusion, you probably don't need to install a lot of things to basically get this running. But as I said, the Tomb Crafter is on early stages, and I'm going to be expecting that we're going to be seeing a lot more of it. And here's another prompt again, once again, out of this thing. I don't think it came out any better and it seems very malfigured and yeah, it's, it's just kind of kind of creepy to be honest. But hey, I don't want to make this review any longer. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of similar technology. Somebody's going to be maybe using a fork of this and we're probably going to be seeing, you know, a lot of cool stuff come out of from this, but this is going to be really huge for people who want to animate their comic panels and things and things like that. The utility of this is very big, but obviously the accuracy of it and how to train it and all of this will come with a lot of time to basically make a perfection. But we are very close to that anime industrial evolution well, or revolution, whatever you want to call it, where people are starting to be producing anime at their own homes. And they basically have all the tools already to basically kind of start that over. We have a lot of like overlay technology, rotoscoping, and this is just another a tool to basically do animation at this point. So it's pretty crazy. But hey, make sure to subscribe and like to the channel, and I will be seeing you on the next video. Cheers.